Hey everyone, this is Manas, your friend and tutor. And guys, I'm back with another video on perspective projections. This time, we'll take a look at two-point perspective or a perspective drawing with two vanishing points. So, 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 let's begin with problem number one. And here we go. So, it goes like this. There is a rectangular block. Uh, well, its dimensions have been given to us. This sort of is, uh, what do you call it? It's a square prism basically, okay, or a cuboid, whatever, 20 by 20 by 40, it's like this, 20, 20 and this height is 40. This has been given to us. Let's read this further and let's get into the details of this very problem. It is lying on the ground plane on one of its largest faces. So the case is like this, lying on the ground plane, let me just mark it on one of its largest faces. So there are four faces which are largest one this one this one and this one 20 by 40 where is this lying on the ground plane perfect no problem what's next then there is a vertical edge a vertical edge is in the picture plane so there is a vertical edge which is in the picture plane so there are two things which you need to keep keep in mind one is that one of the largest face uh, face is uh, on the ground and secondly a vertical edge is in the picture plane so you have to make sure that these two things reflect perfectly in our drawing okay and the longer face containing that edge makes an angle of 30 degrees with the picture plane so there are a whole lot of information let me just try to explain you one by one so the situation is like this so you've got a what, what do you say this a rectangular block fine 20 that's 20 20 by this is 40 largest face in the horizontal plane okay in the ground let's say not horizontal plane but the ground now this there is a vertical edge let's say this vertical page so you guys are watching this from the front so bit as far as the environment of perspective projection goes you are the observer from the front okay then there is a picture plane behind which there is going to be this object so if you have a picture plane over here, just watch this carefully. If you have a picture plane, this edge, this edge over here is in contact with the picture plane. And if this edge is in contact with the picture plane, that means the true length of this edge will be seen from, from the front. That's for sure. And in that process, what will happen is this over here, this face and this face, these two faces are going to make some kind of angle with the picture plane this angle over here and this angle over here these two angles can only be seen from the top and remember guys uh, if you have, haven't seen the previous video again i would suggest that go ahead and watch that video everything that i am going to follow is based on the third angle projection that means top view is going to be at the top or top view is going to be above and front view is going to be below okay so this angle over here and this angle over here will be seen in the top view with respect to the picture plane obviously so there is this thing let me just read this further makes an angle of 30 degrees with the picture plane who makes an angle longer face so this longer face you can keep it like this also no? it's absolutely fine let me just show you you can keep it like this also then this would be in contact with the picture plane this angle would be 30 degrees or you can keep it like this and this edge would be in the picture plane this face over here would be making an angle of 30 degrees it completely depends on what your assessment of this particular question is right so this is basically how the object has been kept let me just show you once again you are watching this entire thing from the front you are the observer watching this from the front so in between you you are the observer and the object what is there there is a picture plane one edge is in the picture plane here it has been clearly mentioned one edge so this will in this will come in contact okay like this with the picture plane like this and at the same time this longer face makes an angle of 30 degrees with the picture plane that has been given to us so this is how the object has been positioned so if i were to say you draw the top view you can you can say that the top view can be drawn like this okay 30 degree top view can also be drawn like this i don't know how i have drawn Let's go ahead and see how it has been positioned. First of all, let me rub all of this. Well, information regarding the station point also has been given to us. 
so let us fix that in just in just a little while don't worry let's have a line what is this this is the picture plane so if you have the picture plane over here like this let me just try to show you here it is picture plane would be like this so if you watch the picture plane from the top right now we are interested in making the top view if you watch this picture plane from the top what would you see from the top what would you see you'll see a line and all these things have been explained in a very detailed fashion in the first video so go ahead and check it out if you still have it okay so it goes like this this is the picture plane and i'll have an object like this so the angle made over here guys this in fact is 30 degrees okay exactly this is how it has been kept this way right okay so that is the top view you can mark all the eight corners four corners at the top and four corners at the bottom right now right now let's read this further the station point is 50 mm in front of the picture plane so just think about this that's the object isn't it then there is this picture plane okay you are going you guys are watching this from the front what happens is the station point that means you the, the, the observer you are 50 millimeters away in front of the picture plane that has been written 50 millimeters in front of the picture plane so this is the picture plane and 50 millimeters away this way 50 millimeters away from where can you see this distance obviously from the top okay so this distance of 50 millimeters have to be marked somewhere here let me show you exactly you have to mark a center first of all okay why a center answer in just a short while don't worry just reach here vertically downward and from this point you need to travel 50 millimeters and that's it that's where the station point is and now let me tell you why have i marked the center the reason being very simple that the station point it is 50 millimeters in front of the picture plane fine no problem but at the same time it lies it is uh, 30 mm above the ground plane that is something that i'll be fixing just just wait a while everything will fall in place and lies in a central plane okay and it lies in a central plane which passes through the center of the block so it has been given the station point is lying in a central plane something like this something like this a central plane okay that central plane would look like a line okay that's it so that this line over here essentially represents a central plane and from the picture plane the station point is how much away 50 millimeters away so that is why we have located it like this once you have located the station point everything will become very easy for you the tough aspect of perspective projection is to locate everything okay and to position the object in the appropriate way okay let's let's proceed and now at any distance at any distance from this point okay at any distance we have already finished the making the top view we are now interested in making the front view so in the front you know the you are the observer so your eyesight is at a certain height from the hp how high 30 millimeters so your eyesight is 30 millimeters above the ground so basically let me just show you i could have done it the other way also this is the horizontal level or horizon level or horizon line okay so what i essentially i could have done is i could have easily made this ground line initially then 30 millimeters above the ground line i could have made the horizon i did in the reverse fashion you also can do that and this is something that you can experiment in the problems that i had discussed in the previous video also very simple so this difference okay this length does not matter you can keep it as much as you want but i would suggest you to keep it uh, somewhere around one centimeter to three centimeter because this this gap there is no point in increasing this gap okay because this entire thing is the top view and over here we'll be making the front view so that's it now what to do you need to mark the vanishing point just watch this how this vanishing point can be achieved so follow the steps here it is please uh, you need to make use of a mini drafter so keep the scale of your mini drafter aligned along the sledge okay tighten the screw bring it over to this point s and then draw a line until it intersects this p somewhere here this point is point v1 sorry v2 v1 will be here in the same fashion keep your mini drafter aligned along this edge tighten the screw 
bring it over to S, draw a line. This is going to give you V1. Now project two vertical lines from V1 and V2 vertically downwards so that it is going to intersect this horizontal line somewhere here and here. So that's capital V1 and capital V2. So there are going to be two vanishing points. The edges over here are going to appear as if they are converging at V2 and the edges over here, this one and this one, they are going to appear as if they are converging towards V1. That's the entire idea of two point perspective or angular perspective. Why angular perspective? Because two faces, two faces, one over here, this is 20 by 20 face, one over here, this is 20 by 40 face. Both of them are at a certain angle with respect to picture plane. That's the reason. Now what? Okay, let me just quickly, let's say that this is uh, the four corners at the top be represented by A. Let's call this as B, C, D. Okay, and four corners at the bottom, let's say it's E, F, G and H. Now let's get going. So from all these corners, all these corners have to be joined with S. Okay. This corner FB corner, since this is in contact with the picture plane, this will be seen in its true length. So its true length is how much? We already know that the true length is 20 millimeters. Now, where is this kept? Where is this kept? On in the ground. Okay. So this distance, this is the, you are watching this from the front. So this is the ground plane, isn't it? So from the front, the ground plane appears as a line. And above the line, you need to travel how much? 20 millimeters. That's exactly what you need to do. Let me just show you. Okay. Let me have a line from here also, this line. So from here you need to draw 20 millimeters. That's it. It's very simple. So obviously four corners at the top were A, B, C, D, out of which this F, B corner. At the top we have B and at the bottom we have F. So these are the two corners of this edge which is in contact with the picture plane. That is why it has been shown in its true length. Again, let me tell you. FB is equal to 20 millimeters. Remember this. FB is equal to 20 millimeters. Why? Why is it being shown in its true length? Because it is in contact with the picture plane. This edge, this edge over here is in contact with the picture plane and this face is making an angle of 30 degrees. Okay. So let's proceed. Now what? So we've got these points, right? And here, what to do now? So join B with V2, F with V2, join B with V1 and F with V1 like this. Now, please watch this carefully. So as far as this vertical edge, this vertical edge is concerned, this vertical edge is A and E. At the top there is A and at the bottom we have E. So we've reached here and then at the top we are going to have A and at the bottom we are going to have E marked. Secondly, there is a vertical edge here also. Okay, when you view it from here, this is going to get narrower, isn't it? That is why. So, C and G, this, this, here, this is going to be C and this point will correspond to point G. Done. Let me just darken this up. Yeah. Now, now it has become very easy. You know what the approach is. Okay. So, what do you need now? This is A, B, C. There is going to be a point D over here. So join, you can do two things. Join A with V2. Okay. Or C with V1. G with V1 or E with V2. Now you can see this point over here will be what? D, H, D, H, D. And this has got to be H. Not H, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Yes. This point could have been obtained in other fashion also. You could have easily made a line from G. Okay. Uh, until you join this V1. From G and C1. That could have also been done. They would have also intersected here. Let me just show you. That's it. So you would have still got the same points. In the same position. Now the, the idea is. This face over here. Has to be darkened. Like this. Okay. And the stuff which you will not see or which gets hidden is this. Let me just make them by these hidden lines. There you go. That's a two point perspective. 
of a rectangular block 20 by 20 by 15 so you guys were watching it from here okay so it was below your eyesight your eyesight was at a height of 30 millimeters from the ground and this object this is the ground was at a height the maximum height of this object is 20 so that is why this top face this top face was visible to you that's the reason behind that in the second case when it is absolutely at the horizon level what will happen in order to check it out we need to make another diagram same diagram okay all the location and all the vanishing points are going to remain same the only difference being that the location of this edge is going to change slightly i'll show you how that can be done okay this problem might be asked to you in the university and only one case will be asked not all the three cases this is sort of i have i have made the these three cases in order to make you understand how the perspective changes if you keep on lifting the object if you keep it below the eye level how will it look like this if you keep it below the eye level how would it look if you keep it at the eye level how would it look and if you keep it above the eye level how would it look then so i have experimented basically with this problem in order to make you guys understand how the perspective would change okay okay let's let's go ahead and let's see another case at the horizon level so all the stuff remains same no difference everything remains same now this vertical edge this vertical edge is at a slight this is slightly at a higher position with respect to the ground it is not in on the ground plane but it is at a certain height it is in the picture plane obviously this is in the picture plane in contact so half of it is above the horizon level this is something that i have decided this has not been given in the equation this is just an experimentation so this vertical edge is in the picture plane its true shape will be seen let me just show you here it is so half of it is above the horizon line and half of it is below that means 10 mm above and 10 mm below done we already have the vanishing points and let me just show you how the perspective would change here it is join with v2 these two edges uh, not edges but points and join with v1 also now you can clearly see okay something like this these are the points that i am interested in the, the edges over here that means these two points the edges over here that means this one and exactly let me just dark it so that we can have a better assessment this is what you are going to see guys at the level of your eyesight at the level of your eyesight you are going to see this okay top face will not be visible bottom face will not be visible the only thing visible will be this face and this face in perspective two point perspective to be very precise what else well what you can do is you can join this point with v1 this point with v2 and you can also obtain this one over here the points behind you can also follow joining this with v2 this with v2 there you go both ways you're going to get these two points okay so the only thing left is hidden lines and here we go there they are let me just show you very closely how does this look okay that's it that's it that's it that's the top view and that's the front view in perspective let's take up the last case where it is above the horizon level if it is above the horizon level then you will be able to see some portion of this bottom face right if it is below horizon you will see this face if it is at the horizon you will see these two faces right and if it is above the horizon level well you are going to see some portion of this face also case 3 here we go <clears throat> okay let's let's do this now this is above the horizon right so this some some distance randomly pick up any distance and then make this randomly pick up any distance let's take take it as uh, 10 millimeters 1 centimeters that would be enough okay that would be enough you can even take less than that so that's it so this is the true length okay since this point there is an edge over here although it appears at the point there is an edge over here because we are watching from the top so that's it now let me join these two points with v2 and v1 here we go there you go you you've got this point this point okay this and then this this and like this 
join it darken it join this point with v1 you can also join this point with v1 you can join this point with v2 this point with v2 and this is how it would look there you go you've got the points and the stuff remaining is this bottom face is well luckily this is visible so you darken it and the stuff which is not visible has to be given some respect in the form of a hidden line here we go done all the three cases smashed very easily now let's take a look at another problem and this is going to be slightly interesting as we are going to be dealing with a pentagonal prism in perspective very interesting do watch it here we go so let me just read the problem draw the perspective view of a pentagonal prism 30 and 60 okay 30 30 30 60 60 okay lying on the ground plane on one of its rectangular faces where on the ground plane ground plane ground plane okay on one of its rectangular faces that's a rectangular face that's a rectangular faces lying on one of its rectangular faces now if it, if it is kept like this then obviously well some kind of angle this axis will be making some kind of an angle that's for sure how much is that axis inclined at 30 degrees with respect to the picture plane and the corner of the base touching the picture plane okay this is very interesting guys ah uh, let's say you got a picture plane like this okay that picture plane is going to be between you that is the observer and the object over here now one if it is like this you have a picture plane over here let's say this corner is in contact with the picture plane okay only this corner is in contact in the previous problem we saw that an edge was in contact with the picture plane but here only a corner is in contact with the picture plane it's going to get very interesting so do watch it right till the end let's see okay the station point is 65 mm in front of the picture plane no problem this can be worked out in the top view and lies in a central plane okay this is interesting which bisects the axis in the previous problem also we had a central plane okay and here also we are going to have a central plane the idea to draw that is through the bisection of the axis let's see how that can be worked out okay the horizon well guys this is the most important point the horizon is at the level of the top edge horizon like this you guys are watching this from here at the level of this top edge that is the horizon again i am reiterating because this is not something that i am going to write i am going to implement on the drawing sheet okay at the horizon like this this is this edge is right uh, at the level of your eye top edge now guys listen to this very carefully rectangular face in the hp and it's like this okay now the axis from here until you reach here obviously the axis is going to be making some angle how much is that well that is 30 degrees fine no issues now the standard procedure that we had followed in case of uh, projection of solids that is something that i will try to implement in a very small portion here also now axis is inclined to vp obviously what you are going to do you are going to smash this on the vp from where can you see the true shape of its base the true shape of the base can be seen from the front what are you going to draw first you are going to draw the front view so it's going to be something like this where is the front view going to be below why because we are following the third angle method of projection like this okay if you have not watched my videos on projection of solids go ahead what are you waiting for watch them uh, all the links are down below in the description playlist basically so you have a projection like this when you make the front view it would be something like this it's it's a rough estimate okay and by the way this is 30 this is 60 okay like this like this like this this is going to be the third the what do you call it? what is this let me just write it this is the top view 
and this is the front view because things could get very confusing. We usually do not follow the third angle prediction method. Then what we've been asked to do is one corner, there is a corner over here. Let's say this corner is in contact with, with the picture plane. So assume this vertical plane as the picture plane. Okay. So and at the same time what will happen is where is this written uh, 30 degree axis being inclined at 30 degree to the picture plane. So what is happening is let me just show you axis is inclined at 30 degrees but at the same time this corner remains in contact with the picture plane and axis is simultaneously making an angle of 30 degrees. So what you can do here you can make a point and this angle let us say this angle is 30 degrees. If the axis makes a 30 degree angle obviously all the edges parallel to the axis will also be making 30 degrees angle. Done. This is something that I would, I, I would uh, try to implement here. Let me just show you how all of this can be worked out. So here we go. First thing ground line. Okay, this is the ground, ground plane, which appears as a line from the front, the front view, bottom, top view here. Okay, third angle projection. Remember this front view below, top view above. Object kept like this, and you guys are watching. You are gonna have two vanishing points. How to locate that first of all? Okay, so the case is like this: ground line, and then there is an object. Now. Please follow the steps. There is something which I will be drawing right now. Let me just show you. Here it is. Why have I drawn it? Well, you will obviously get the answer. Okay. But do follow the steps what I am about to tell you right now. And eventually as the video proceeds, you are going to, this is self explanatory. This is something that you will get to know automatically once you uh, go on to a certain level in this problem. So here it is front view we know this okay as we were told the horizon where is the horizon is at the level of top edge this is the top edge horizon horizon top edge that's it this is hn horizon line now what made a line okay this distance could be could be anything not anything but we've been given this distance let me just show you have we been given no 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 this distance has not been given to us so there is no need absolutely of this distance so this over here is the complete top view and this over here is the front view so, so you can keep both of them any distance apart does not matter okay now this pp over here is the picture plane what i could have done is i could have initially made this picture plane and I know very well that the station point is 65 millimeters away and then I could have drawn this line. I did it in the opposite fashion. I first of all made a line over here, let's say 2 centimeters away. This has to be randomly chosen. You don't have to worry about it. Doesn't matter how much distance you take, you'll end up making the same drawing. And then I went in the reverse fashion and then I located this picture plane 65 millimeters above. Okay. So don't worry. Now, now watch this carefully. What have I done? Please, please see this bottom portion. What I have basically done is, let me just show the animation once again. Downwards and then this line over here. Where is the zoom effect? Here it is. This line is basically the projection of this zigzag portion ABC. Isn't it? The zigzag portion ABC. And this is going to be very important. This is something that we are going to kick off with. Here we go. So just mark a point first of all. Here. Let me just mark a point. This is that is going to be point C. Now, this over if this is C, this is C. This is the corner which is in contact with the picture plane. Okay, we have been said this, right? Corner of the base touching the picture plane. This is something we need to ensure. Then A C to A. So what you need to do is you need to keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. Let me just draw that once again one leg over here other leg over here and with that much amount as the radius and with this fellow c as the center cut and arc you are going to get this point as point a similarly with this fellow as the center and this much as the radius this much with this as the center cut and arc and with this as the center and with that same radius cut and arc again these are the points e and d and similarly uh, you need to locate point b 
so basically what we've done is we've got this over here we this is point a this is point e this is point d that c and that is going to be point b here we'll have point b okay now draw perpendicular lines let me just show that once again keep one scale of your mini drafter aligned along this line tighten the screw and then through all these points all these points draw a line how long 60 millimeters long okay this is going to be 60 millimeters now all these edges are how much this is 30 millimeters remember this dimensions have been given to us and just close it okay now behind a we have a1 behind e we have e1 and so on you now know very well why this has been hidden the reason for which has been explained in the previous slide okay first of all let me get rid of all of this uh, okay now let's get back to work top view fine okay so we have a central plane over here along which we'll have the station point how much away 65 millimeters away so for that that central plane is going to pass or is going to bisect this axis actually what happens guys the axis is exactly below this this edge over here below this edge okay right so if you bisect this edge automatically the axis would get bisected just drop a vertical line here and then travel 65 millimeters down below just draw a line this intersection will be 65 millimeters long okay that's the station point right s just mark s for the station point some people also write it as sp absolutely your choice all the points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 all the points have to be joined with the station point but before that what we'll try to do is we'll try to locate the vanishing points in the top view as well as in the front view and here it is first of all keep your mini drafter aligned along c c1 tighten the screw bring it over to s draw a line keep your drafter along ac tighten the screw bring it over to s draw a line that's v1 and that's v2 drop uh, vertical lines from v1 and v2 until you reach the horizon level that's small capital v2 and capital v1 there you go now join all the 10 corners okay from a to e from a1 to e1 to station point here we go one by one right something like this these are the interest the intersection points are something that we are really interested in drop vertical lines from all these intersection points okay they are going to be very very close so make sure the pencil is properly sharpened now now what to do what to do first off let me mark point c so where is point c in contact with the picture plane so from here you need to draw a line like this okay so this is the point c the intersection of this vertical line with this c over here that is point c with capital letters you can write that no problem okay so point c has been located what else can be done okay point b and point b1 can be located let me tell you why right because this is point c you can call this as point c or this as point c it completely depends on how you look at it this is going to be point b for sure b and b1 are in your eyesight level in your eyesight level isn't it so this is your eyesight level because this is the horizon line so exactly the location let me just tell you this b1's location will be somewhere here okay and b's location will be somewhere somewhere here to be very precise that's b1 and that's b join it join it join b with c also okay now what now what we've got into trouble the problem is in order to mark the remaining points what shall we follow so so listen to this idea let's say this point this point okay just below c vertically just below c you can say so the point's name is can i draw this oh there is no space okay this point corresponds to this point in the perspective right done 
now what to do this point will also be will also appear as it as if it is vanishing towards v1 so just draw it now this line in the perspective is this line in the orthographic so somewhere along this line we have d and e so somewhere along this line we'll have d and e where is d just just watch where the mouse is hovering this is d and then downwards 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 please follow please follow the cursor that's point d okay okay first of all i have located a all right no problem a and c a and c along the same horizontal line so c and a so that's going to be point a and this over here guys this is going to be point this one is point e and that's point d right i need to zoom on this it's it's, it's a bit small you know okay so this is your first time maybe it might appear a bit tough to you but once you get through this problem your confidence level is going to definitely rise man and then you can solve any problem any drawing from any textbook from your university right so let's 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 proceed and let's finish the pentagon irregular pentagon in the perspective now what now guys the task has become very easy from b this line from a a line to v2 from c a line towards approaching v2 and from e and d also lines approaching v2 like this right now you need to just find the intersection this is c1 let me just show you uh, let me just locate a first so this line follows a and then vertically downwards vertically downwards vertically down this behind a there is going to be here this is going to be a1 similarly if this is b1 over here we'll have c1 let me just show you c and where is c somewhere along this line we'll have c1 so c1 and this over here is c1 and similarly you can obtain d1 and e1 and this portion is going to be the visible portion let me just draw it okay edge wise and the stuff remaining inside has to be given some respect in the form of hidden lines and here we go that's it this is how a two point perspective can be made this was a slightly trickier problem the one before where we had three different cases was a bit easier because the object was very easy to deal with this one a pentagonal prism well slightly trickier so after watching these two examples i'm very much sure that you guys must have got a very a lot of confidence in fact and uh, i assure you doesn't matter what kind of problem is you will be able to solve that draw that with absolute ease if you have seen these two examples so go ahead and take on more problems now i'm going to be coming up with more lectures rather one more lecture on uh, on perspective and let's see what that will be based on i was thinking about one more lecture on a three point perspective okay all the faces are at certain angle with with respect to the picture plane that is going to be very interesting let's see but that is going to happen after after a few days or even a week over even weeks okay so guys that was all for today i'll see you again in the next video until then take care have a nice day and keep watching thanks